so could we say that you are a biotech entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I guess. Um, we do a lot of electronic implanting and uh, we develop hardware for implanting. Um, and yeah, it's basically, basically. And you recently moved to Helsingborg? Yeah, two months ago. So now we're a lot closer to, to some of the people that we work with, uh, app developers, uh, software developers, and especially the, the, the hardware developing. Oh, so all of that's here in Helsingborg. I didn't know that. Um, well, Helsingborg, Malmö, Lund, it's a bit spread out, but the Öresunds, the Öresunds region is packed with, well, everything you, you need to, to be a biotech entrepreneur, I guess. So, so you said that you have uh, biotech implants, uh, that you make them. Do you have any yourself? Uh, I've got several, actually. Um, the, the most common one, and the one we uh, sell the most and perform the most is a regular NFC chip. Mm -hmm. It's an NTAG 216. It's a 1K passive memory that's uh, encapsulated in a bioglass capsule. Mm -hmm. So basically, you teach your body how to speak machine. Mm -hmm. uh, you can program it with lots of different triggers. Uh, you can have business cards on it, you can use it as a door opener, uh, uh, activate and deactivate alarms, you can program it with several big macros to communicate with your home when you get in the vicinity of it. Um, well, basically, depending on your software skills, you can do... So basically, it's a way a for, for machines to recognize you? Yeah, I mean, the, it gives you a seamless interaction since I can't speak machine, um, but my body knows it. So, okay. so do you have other implants? Um, a silicone implant, actually, that we're gonna change uh, as soon as we come up with a, the best type of hardware, encapsulate it, we're gonna change, because this is just a chunk of silicone, basically. And so you're making you can, a hole you can, for something yeah, useful. <laughs> I can actually fit that with, I mean, from the size of that thing, 50 sensors, um, Bluetooth, probably Wi-Fi. Um, it's kind of big, mm -hmm. but that will never go mainstream. So the, the dedication and most of the work is to make it as small as possible, mm -hmm. or else it will never go mainstream. So w what will go mainstream then? Uh, I, I can see the identity cards going mainstream, but... Um, I would say basically, any implantable tech that gives you, uh, from as small as a, the novelty of opening a door mm. to transactions, bank ID, um, if you, well, Fitbit when the, when the tech is small enough. Basically, everything you can do with your phone and with all the cards you have in your wallet so it can be replaced yeah. with one chip. What about charging? Um, right now, they're passive. So you don't need charging. The, the NFC is 100% uh, passive. So you just have to be in the vicinity of an antenna that mm -hmm. powers up the chip. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to like heavy encryption and reading pulse, mm -hmm. and especially whenever, whenever you have to transmit anything, of course you need, you need power. Mm -hmm. So there are battery powered implants right now, um, but they're only on a proof of concept level. Mm -hmm. uh, they work and they light up LEDs, uh, but instead of the LEDs, you can put different types of sensors on them. Um, and of course, then you just have uh, induction charging. In England, for instance, you can pay with uh, a contactless um, uh, credit card. And I, even in Sweden, we have uh, Ica Banken doing that. Yeah. So that would be one of the usages. Definitely. I mean, the, the, the Visa card is only the, the carrier of information. I mean, both MasterCard and Visa are looking at uh, both uh, contactless and, uh, and fingerprint sensors in the, in the cards. Um, but I mean, putting it behind physical encryption, it's, it's, not, it's not far off. 
there's loads and loads of bureaucracy surrounding banks and everything with payments, mm -hmm. but uh, there's so many alternative ways now of paying, you know, Swish, PayPal, there's, uh, there's alternative routes around the bureaucracy, I guess, but mm -hmm. you just have to come in contact with the right people. So, so uh, fitness bands and so on, in the future, we might not even have them, they're just implants. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a wearable, 50% of every person that has ever bought a, a wearable doesn't use it after two to three months. I stopped using my um, wearable a few weeks ago because after one and a half years, the, the outer layer of the metal was worn off and it turns out the lower la layer had nickel in it. Oh. <laughs> if that happened with an implant... Oh, that couldn't happen. Um, you'd, you'd, of course, have the same safety measures as you'd have with an, any medical implant. So all components would have to be uh, alloy-free or really good alloys. Mm -hmm. But the outer layer... Well, the implant itself, you would perylene coat that. Uh, perylene coating for electronics is what you use for um, deep-sea exploring. Uh, you know, submarines that go down 10,000 meters. So the ele electronics themselves would never be exposed to the body, mm -hmm. even if the implant silicone layer uh, was compromised. Mm -hmm. So we'd always have that extra precaution. But if the perylene broke as well, you would have to be in a serious car wreck or something, because they're super, super durable. Do you think that uh, healthcare will start using it for patients? Um, I can see uh, a lot of a lot of pros uh, with the logistics in the the healthcare system, at least in Sweden, for both patients and doctors and nurses. Uh, right now, they have somewhat twenty different systems they have to log in and out of mm -hmm. for patient journal journals and, and the patient history, this and that. If they could only have uh, identity, authentication, logging in, in and out, that would cut hours out of every day of administration and logins and, and stuff like that. Mm. And, uh, and for, uh, patients, for patients, just blipping in or blipping your phone like a bank ID when you're, are, when you're on the way to the hospital. Blipping your phone, uh, just pointing a cursor on the map saying, I'm going to this hospital this is me, and they will have your entire history of, well, everything. So they could basically be prepared whenever you come. So, so 30 years ago, I read about this new upcoming technology where people would have like optical uh, memory cards with their entire health record on it, and they would bring that to the hospital. And I was saying, no, well, it's kind of the same thing, but it will be in, in an implant. So it seems like this has been a dream for many, many years. So what's the iPad? If you look 30 years ago, any, they, all their dreams has basically come true. The only thing we do now is we dream more advanced. I mean, uh, everything I come up with is possible because the, the developers are there. And the further we come, the, the, the smaller and the more effective uh, we make the, the technology. I mean, so, so, so people have seen the need for a long time, but it's now that it's becoming possible to, to really make it happen. Definitely. I mean, we're paving way for, since no one else is doing it, I mean, we're the only, the grinders and, and the body hackers are basically uh, paving way for this new paradigm that is implantable technology. I mean, pacemakers have been around since, since what, the 60s? 50s. 50s. I mean, Swedish invention. Yeah, and that's, that's a long time. And they look basically the same as the data transfer and the effectiveness of the pacemaker that is a uh, hundred times better right now. But, but still, that was made 60 years ago. We started implanting uh, these transponders just a few years ago, but people have been doing it. The, the technology has been there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, there hasn't been a need for it to be... No one's seen the need to make it more efficient and better until mm -hmm. now, because now we know, okay, uh, 868 writable characters can do this much. But if we put maybe 4K in there, it can do even more. Mm -hmm. If we put uh, more encryption on the, on the UID, 
uh, you can start using it for banking. You can start mm -hmm. using it for uh, identification, passport, uh, whatnot. So w when do you think that we'll have 1% of people with implants? Within 15 years. And 10%? Depending on the demography, but I'd say 10% fairly soon because the people being 13 today, when they're 23, they will start getting tech, implant tech. They will bring it to their own families. I mean, it's like, a, it's like any new tech. You bring it home, you show it to your mom and dad, your mom and dad start talking about it to their mom and dads. Uh, grandma and grandpa's, of course, are going to say, oh my god, that's the devil, basically. Um, and it's it's, it's going to spread. Hmm. If one person takes it into one family, his siblings will get it. Probably one of the parents will get it because they'll see the use of it. I mean, when you brought a mobile phone home uh, in the 80s, they were like, yeah, really? You really want people to be able to reach you all the time, wherever you are? Like, yeah, it's really, it's really good. 20 years later, everyone's got one. I mean, the Christmas present will be tech for grandma. Come on, grandma, you got a bad heart. We want, we want some monitoring, just so we know. They'll buy some implant tech to grandma. The grandma mm. will have a little, little dinghy on the inside of her arm. Um, database will flag for whatever when her pulse or rhythm goes below something with, you know. Mm -hmm. And they'll be there to take her to the hospital, give her the right, correct uh, blood pressure medicine, and she'll have uh, another 10 good years. So, so what about security? What's to stop me from just taking out the knife and, and just cutting it out from you? Well, there, here we come to, to encryption. So would you rather cut my hand open and steal a chip than you would nick my wallet? Because nicking my wallet will basically give you a, a slap on the wrist, while cutting my hand open and taking my implant will give you serious jail time. Um, so basically, it's pretty important that no one will want to take my chip, mm. even, though if, even if they know I've got a million dollars on my bank account mm. and I can access my bank account via my chip. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to have some sort of additional encryption. No, you'd have to have some kind of, of detection that it left your body. Yes. And, and also, then... like a Visa card has today, it's, you can't just blip the Visa card. Mm -hmm. Unless you use these 80s thingies. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to use the Visa card and then you'd have to authenticate that you're the carrier because you know the, the PIN code. Mm -hmm. So right now, you can't really put uh, bio encryption in the existing technology. But when we interact with all of the surrounding technologies, we do, we do everything completely seamless with our chips they, of course, will know if they're in your body. And if they leave, um, they're so, just going to... So the um, uh, ADAC, the German Automobile Association, they recently show that every known car brand with the proximity car key can be hacked using um, a, uh, um, a repeater. Yeah, everything can be hacked. So, uh, but th that would seem like something you could really do with the implant as well. For, for instance, let's say we start transmitting biodata. Mm -hmm. um, everything that transmits or, or receives is hackable. I mean, and this is going to be every, every black hat in the world is going to attack this with full force because if there's something new that's hackable, it's going to be hacked. And we can't really do anything about that. Uh, what about personal integrity? Will people be forced by their employer or their hospital or their health insurance to carry implants? No, but real, for real, maybe some, some parts of some services might only be accessible via chip because it will be faster. It's like self-service in the store. If you, if, you have the, if you have the membership card, you can go in the fast lane. If you don't have it, you, you'll have to stay in line. Um, Integrity-wise, it's not a lot different from carrying a phone. I mean, my phone gives away a lot more than, than a chip ever would. 
unless we talk biodata streaming. Um, we've been th thinking about that, and when you stream biodata, that's pretty personal and private. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to uh, detach the, the social security number or your personal number from the data before it goes into a data lake. But extracting it to be able to use it uh, for, you, for yourself or your doctor or whatever, there would have to be some kind of pairing that uh, the data alone would never be able to be um, referenced to you so, as a person. So, so there are some measures like obfuscation and anonymization and uh, yeah, so of course. I mean, we're not we're not there yet. It's a it's a long way, but um, I mean, so, of course, so, we have so, to yeah, it's, start it's, it thinking about like, the ethics when you develop. It seems to me like there is there is a long future ahead of us in this field, and and. and it's only when we start doing it that we're going to discover. Yeah, the but I mean, we're the, every everyone, and now I'm talking my global network. We're all thinking about these things. I mean, ten years prior to, to actually being there, mm -hmm. and we know that if you can put an ID card and a passport in a chip, some governments or some parts of governments will, of course, want to utilize that mm -hmm. in. Uh, in a way that's not compatible with, with personal integrity. And some persons in society will, of course, also try and take advantage of people having, um, it's like that you do today, really. If you, don't, uh, if you don't set certain settings on your phone, Google Maps will use your location, mm. uh, Facebook will use your everything. Mm. So it's really not any different from now, it's only since you hear it's an implant, there's, there's all this about, oh, government's going to, big brother, yada, yada, they're going to track you and everything. Well, well they, they already do. Because everyone saying that on Facebook isn't surfing via Tor on a black phone uh, with a private VPN. Uh, so every, everything has flaws. Nothing is flawless. It's, for instance, I mean, everything is hackable. It's not until you get hacked. You, you notice the problem, though. I mean, that's why you hire hackers, to, to find loopholes and, and find flaws, hmm. to make it safer. But there's still, I mean, there's nothing that can hold water forever. Benefits outweigh the... Yeah, definitely. And said. I mean, the, the, the flaws are going to get fixed. And the more flaws we find, the better tech we make. So uh, thank you very much. It yeah. was very interesting to speak with you. And uh, good luck with the uh, biotech hacking. Thank you.